So we'll, we'll do a little meditation and just kind of see how it sits. And I'll try and combine the ideas of these two verses. So if you want to get yourself back into a good posture for meditation, we'll just see if we can digest some of these ideas. And so with that bodhicitta motivation, just briefly come back to the breath, just to let the surface distraction settle. and shift to analysis and start by thinking about in an ordinary day, in between activities, in between your plans, what are some of the driving motivations? Or what do you frame as a need for relief or pleasure? If you just picture yourself in those transition points during a day, what are you seeking? Sometimes you're seeking just the pause and the break and you're reconnecting with your path in whatever conceptual way or spacious way. But sometimes you're chasing or avoiding. And when you're chasing or avoiding, what seems the most common framework? Is it stimulation of the senses or avoiding discomfort related to the senses? Is it more protecting what you have, trying to gather more? Or are you more relational? needing validation or avoidance of criticism, issues of reputation. If you were to look at your own push and pull in those quiet moments in between events, which type of push and pull is most common for you?
Are they the same drives when you're alone in between things as they are when you're engaged in an activity or with other people? Or does it shift? Just kind of contrasting those two. When you're alone and in between things, as opposed to when you're engaged in an activity or with other people. And just try and increase your self-knowledge by repeating what you've found in terms of your patterns and habits. Just kind of noticing what trends most days take. And then pick one behavior that you do by yourself in between activities or in between events that is very obviously of the eight worldly concerns. Maybe it's a snacking behavior. Maybe it's a text messaging behavior. Maybe it's scrolling through social media scrolling for happiness, stimulation, interesting articles, whatever. But just try and find one, something you do often on an ordinary day. And then bring the Dharma lens to it and ask yourself, what is the version of this behavior that is probably okay and can be kept in moderation? And what's the version of this that is so obviously a superstition, a lie I tell myself, something that's actually not healthy? So look at that same behavior from two different angles. When it's something that's pretty benign, as opposed to something that very obviously reinforces craving and grasping or avoidance aversion.
And then thinking about similarly, when you're with people or you're engaged in some plan or some activity, how can you release yourself from the bondage of attachment that you have towards the behavior that seems to help, but is actually a superstition? How can you break the spell for yourself? Maybe it's as simple as reminding yourself that when you're caught in the superstition, you say things to yourself like always or never or must and need. When in fact, what you're saying is a description of something that is sometimes occasional, a condition not a cause. So just take that awareness of yourself and how you get caught in superstitions and come back to your awareness that all sentient beings do the same thing. All of us get trapped in the superstitions of the eight worldly concerns. All of our kind mother sentient beings who have offered us so much, whether intentionally or unintentionally, So shift from thinking about your own pain and mistakes to a universal understanding of how all sentient beings create their own pain and mistakes, just like we do. Make a bridge of affinity, empathy, connection, and imagine taking on all of their mistakes and their suffering and their superstitions of the eight worldly concerns and giving them to your self-cherishing thought. Your self-cherishing thought, then weakening. And give every happiness and benefit to all of your kind mother sentient beings. Letting go of your attachment to it ownership and possessiveness of it, freeing up your good heart. So breathe in with the idea of taking compassion. 
black smoke. And breathe out with the idea of giving loving kindness, golden light. And just let these two ideas ride on the breath. Breathing out, giving golden light. Having a loving kindness that offers your past, present and future happiness. And taking on the in-breath, black smoke, connecting with compassion, take the past, present, and future suffering of all sentient beings, give it to the self-cherishing thought. Breathing in, compassion. Breathing out, loving kindness. For all those who have ever betrayed you, all those who have criticized you, all of those who benefit you directly or indirectly until you're breathing for all sentient beings with whom you have a connection and an interconnection. It's only our self grasping that gives us the illusion of separateness. So it's as if each breath reveals interconnection. And imagine that then self-cherishing loses its hold and loving kindness increases its ability and you dedicate. Ma ke pa nam ke yu chi 
Kevanyam ba me bayam, gone gone do pelwansho. And the long life prayers for our teachers, the wish granting, wish fulfilling jewel, source of every single benefit and happiness in this world, the incomparably kind Supreme Tenzin Gatso. May you have a long life and all your holy wishes be spontaneously fulfilled. What was Wajan Jing Jong Gong Gao Wei? Tenzing Kuan Pao Wei Kun Zuo Duo Po Ze. Duo Zuan Kua Wei Lei Mun Duo Duo. And you can relax your attention. Thanks everybody. And um, remember that those commentaries exist. Um, Lama Yeshi Wisdom Archive has uh, commentaries by both Lama Zopa Rinpoche and His Holiness and many other teachers. But that book, Teachings from Tibet, is really a winner. So if anybody wants it, it's free online, Lama Yeshi Wisdom Archive. And uh, exactly, Laran is holding it up. It's that one. It's got Amitabha on the cover. And yeah, Gloria. Oh, gotta unmute ya. I just want to say happy birthday to Gloria, but also thank you very much, Yonten, for the high caliber of your wonderful teachings. We miss you very much in Australia and can't wait for you to return at some point. So thank you very much and thank you for other people to joining in, especially from Canada and United States. So you're welcome to come here too. <laughs> We'd love to see you in the Blue Mountains. Yeah, thanks, Sue. Thanks very much. Yeah, Gloria.